garden edging. It's one of those simple things that can turn a good garden into a great garden. So we're going to look at a range of options from the cheapest to something that's a little bit flash and be able to decide which one will work best at your place. Well, here's a common picture. The owners have spent some money and really done up this garden bed nicely. Now, if they leave the edge as it is, they run the risk of the lawn taking over the garden bed, but it's an easy fix. Just grab a spade. Spade finish means you cut away the soil and you create an edge on the side of the lawn. There's lots of positives towards this spade finish. It gives you a raised garden bed, meaning when there's too much water falling on your garden, it runs off to pretty much what's a curb and gutter. It's also really easy to maintain because your whippersnipper core is not going to disintegrate because it's not hitting bricks and sandstone. Best thing about it, it's free. Now, if you don't have a whippersnipper, you can still do your edges the old school way with a spade. Now, if you don't trust yourself with the spade edge, you can add some plastic to it. At three bucks a metre, it's not much more than pocket chain. Now, the way to work with it is roll it out in the sun. Let it sunbake. It makes it nice and soft and easy to work with. And then you just peg it in and put it where you want it. Another edge you can make is steel or aluminium. This product here is called Link Edge. It's all ready to go for you. All you need to do if the tree's small enough is go straight over the top of it. But if you're doing a great big tree, you can separate it just here and then put it back together. Now, you can see around the base of this lemon tree where a whippersnipper used to hit it when the grass came right up to it. A circle like this will cost you around 45 bucks, but it'll save your tree. All I'm going to do is put it in dry like this, cut it out with a spade, and then hold it into place with some stakes. Now we're moving up into harder landscaping, and it's about seven bucks a metre up in price too. Treated pine. Treated pine means it's not going to rot or get eaten away in your garden, but it's a permanent boundary for the lawn. It can potentially go underneath it, so dig it down a little bit. The negatives are where they join, the grass can still grow through, and I haven't seen a sleeper that I can bend to make a nice curve out of yet. One of my favourites now, bricks. You can pick them up at second-hand yards and they'll cost you about 50 or 60 cents each. But they do take a bit longer to put in. Now, I'm doing the brick on edge here, which is higher than the lawn, but a lot of it's still in the soil, which is going to give it more strength than just the mortar that's sitting on. And I'm not using the spirit level with the bubble. I'm just using it to make sure they're all on the one plane. Now, it's pretty hard to keep bricks clean when you're mucking around with mud, so don't worry if it's a bit messy. You can always sponge it off with clean water. And I think it's worthwhile pointing out, which means putting the mud between the bricks. If you don't, it's just a free way for the grass to grow into your garden bed. And my last garden edge, and the one that I'm going to leave here forever, is some beautiful sandstone. Now, before I lay it wet, which means lay it on the mud, I'm going to put a few out dry so I can get the angles right. See, we've got that great big joint there. What I can do is just put a spirit level or a piece of timber over that, mirror the cut on both sides, use an angle grinder, and then I'm left with a nice 10 mil joint. Perfect, just like a pro. Well, all my joints look really nice and even. At the moment, it's a bit up and down, but that doesn't matter. The mud will make up the difference and it'll all end up on the one plane. Now, how do you do it? Well, you lift one piece of stone and lay one piece of stone at a time. So take it out, put the mud in, wet the bottom side of the stone and then put it back in. Now, you wet it so it doesn't draw all the moisture out of your mortar or your mud mix. If it draws it out too quick, the mortar will dry separately to the stone and they won't be stuck. Now, before you fill the joint, you want to wet it as well so it doesn't dry out and crack. And then all you do, hold the plants back and flick it in. Now, flicking it in is good. You fill the whole joint, you wipe off the excess, wait for that to be semi-dry and then sponge it off. It'll look a million bucks. Well, I think the sandstone looks really smart. And if you like the look of it like that, it's only going to look better as it ages. The best thing about it, you can mow straight over the top of it and you don't have to do the edges all the time. I reckon the other one that's timeless is the first one, the cheapest one, the spade edge. We've been doing that ever since we've been gardening. But if the brick or the plastic or the timber suits your place and your budget, go for it.